is a 2,000 part per million standard concentrate. We need to do a 1 to 20 dilution. So we set our pipette to 0.5 milliliters, one half a milliliter. And we will carefully measure out Point five milliliters of the standard into our vial. Transfer the remaining material. To a small storage vial, sometimes we have to use the pipette to transfer it completely. And this can be stored in the refrigerator as well for use in the future. And using a pipette or graduated cylinder, add 9 milliliters of water to this standard to make a 100 part per million standard that will be injected into the GC. And cap the vial. And shake a few times to make sure it is well mixed. Again, these diluted standards will be stable under refrigeration for approximately 30 days time. By checking the area of the peaks for each of the components, you can judge the stability of the standards and remake them as needed. We'll now proceed to run the GC to identify the peaks and prepare the calibration curve. At the beginning of the day, before you turn on the GC, it is necessary to turn on the carrier and hydrogen gas located in the hallway behind the laboratory. Open up the helium regulator. all the way and you'll see the pressure has been preset to 20 psi. This is suitable for the analyses being done at Empire Winery and Distilleries. Also turn on the hydrogen valve and again this pressure has been preset to 40 psi which is sufficient for normal FID gas chromatography analyses. Please check the line dryers and after a few years you may find they need replacement or reconditioning to remove any trace moisture. Turn the GC on from the left rear corner to turn on the power. Wait a few seconds for the gas flows to stabilize. And to check the parameter settings, flip the display switch on the right front side of the GC up and then by pressing the actual set point buttons the lower row of buttons for the gas controls and temperature controls we can see the actual settings for the routine analysis at Empire Winery and Distillery the carrier gas which is the carrier one in the first column is set to 3 psi. The hydrogen flow for the FID detector is set to 19 psi. The air flow from the built-in air compressor switch which should be up is set to 8 psi. The heated injection port which is here 
is set to 200 PSI, and when you first turn on the GC, or excuse me, 200 degrees centigrade, and when you first turn on the GC, it takes approximately five minutes for that high temperature to be set. Same thing for the detector. It is set for 225 degrees, but wait approximately 10 minutes from turning on the GC to allow the temperature to stabilize. To protect the packing in the columns used for the analysis, the oven max safety shutoff has been set to 250 degrees centigrade. This will allow you to run programs up to 250 degrees, but if the temperature goes beyond this, the power will shut off and a safety relay will begin to click. Once the GC is turned on, we can turn on the PC, wait for the software to load, and check communications with the hardware. After all the gas flows have been set, after a few minutes, lift and hold the flame ignite switch so that the yellow light glows for about 5 to 10 seconds and that will ignite the FID air hydrogen flame. Lift the lid and using either a piece of cold metal or glass, look for the condensation to build up from the burning of the oxygen in the air and the hydrogen from the FID flame. Also make sure that the detector gain is set on high, shown by the little toggle switch here, and this does not need to be adjusted for normal operation. We close the lid and we're ready to begin our analyses. After the printer is initialized and the system has come to the desktop, double click on the buff GC icon with the red cover lid. Wait for the system to initialize. As the system initializes, you will see it calibrating and going through self-test, hey, and then a hardware number appears in the lower right corner, showing communication has been established between the PC and the GC. Click OK. The system should be in the standby mode. Your retention time windows for all the alcoholic components are present and we're ready to run standards and samples. For proper preparation of samples to compare the fusel oils and the low PPM level contamination that may be present to give a particular distillate beverage its peculiar flavor or aroma, it is necessary to prepare a 1 to 10 dilution of the sample. To do this, take a sample vial and put some identification on it, such as Pomos Vodka, and we are going to prepare a 1 to 10 dilution. We're going to take 1 ml of the vodka and dilute it to 10 milliliters in the vial. This will allow us to measure the low level contamination very accurately and compare the different characteristics of the vodka. Using the digital pipette set to one milliliter or 1,000 microliters, very carefully press the plunger of the pipette down to the first level, put the tip into the sample, slowly pull it up, and blow it out into the vial. Then take some pure water that has not been stored in plastic and carefully fill the vial to the top which is the 10 milliliter mark. Put the cap on the vial 
shake it, and this sample will be ready to inject into the GC. Prepare all of the samples before running the GC so that you can get the best accuracy to compare the characteristics of the different beverages. Once the samples have been prepared, come to the GC, make sure the display switch is up, check your carrier gas, the hydrogen, the air, the temperature of the injector, which should be approximately 200, and the temperature of the detector, which should be approximately 225 degrees. Also, take a piece of metal or glass and hold it in front of the FID and make sure you have the steam showing that the FID is lit. We're now ready to go to the software and begin running samples. Alex? Yeah. Well, just to fill the syringe. To, uh, to make an injection, make sure the syringe is dry by pumping it a few times. Then you want to pull back the plunger so it is maybe two or three microliter of an air bubble after the end of the metal tip. And then insert the needle into the sample vial and pull up approximately two or three microliters of liquid. Then adjust the plunger so that the level of the liquid is at the one microliter line. Then wipe the tip, pull back the plunger a little bit so that there's again one or two microliter air bubble protecting the liquid sample. This can now be injected into the GC and start to run when ready. After the injection is made, you will see the chromatogram begin to show at the bottom of the display. And as peaks come out, they will go up and correspond to the black integration windows which identify the components. The ethanol will usually be off scale since that is the predominant component in the distilled beverages. It is the lower level components that are of interest to make the comparison to compare the characteristics of the beverage. So these are the components that will be calibrated and shown on the screen. Once the chromatogram has been completed, as shown by the standby mode on the screen, we can get ready to make a printout and view the results by adjusting the scale from 2 minutes to 29 minutes so that all of the peaks are in the window and using the plus key to expand the scale and bring out the small peaks. It is not necessary to evaluate the ethanol peak since we know all of the distilled beverages will have a large amount of ethanol. But it is small components that will be characteristic of the flavor and aroma of the beverage. Once we have everything displayed, we click on File, Print, and Print and the chromatogram picture and the table of data will be sent to the printer. Once you get the printout, you can identify the sample, identify the dilution that's used, see the specific components, and on the second page will be the table of data identifying the component and the concentration in parts per million. This is the parts per million in the diluted sample solution. So to get the concentration in the actual beverage, you have to multiply that part per million by 10. For example, we have ethylene glycol, 3.6 ppm in the diluted sample that would be 36 ppm in the original vodka, as an example. By comparing the components that are found and the concentration, you can compare the quality of the different beverages.